Greetings, crop tenders. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Vintage Story. Episode 31, Bigger Farm. First order of business for you guys is to vote on my priority. And here it is. Oh, but not there. It should be up that way. There it is. So very straightforward. If you vote on leatherworking, uh, there is a little bit of a chance that there is borax that was spotted out this way. There was one of these spots was a borax spot. Bromite, I think. Bismuth, borax. So I would go to waypoint 78 and try to find borax. Uh, if you vote on the second one up there, uh, food security, I would just expand the farm. That's really straightforward to do. Um, making sure that we have plenty of crops tucked away for wintertime. And then, the last but not least, search for iron. Uh, iron would be useful, limitedly useful, but still useful. Um, you know what? I might wear my armor. Still useful uh, heading into... You know, we would be able to get tools and the like. And I am not going to take too kindly to trespassers. That's right. I'm in my armor now. You can't get through my armor, can you? So feel free to vote. I also wanted to mention, uh, there's some other techniques. So I did a, a bit of research um, between this stream and last stream. And essentially, Borax... Oh, are they coming in now? Okay, I'm just going to keep wearing my armor for tonight. Uh, borax is often found in lake beds. So if I can't immediately find Borax um, where I had pinged it, uh, what we could do instead is to uh, go to the various lake beds around. Maybe not my own lake bed, because I don't want to disturb the local terrain as much, but go to uh, nearby lake beds and uh, dig little boreholes, which are actually really easy to do when it's in water, uh, because the boreholes you can then swim out of, whereas if you dig a hole in the earth, you have to build a ladder to get out. All right. Looks like food security. Got it. So there's a few other things about food security that I should have mentioned and also mentioned why I didn't take that route. Uh, so one of them would be, I, I did get asked a few times uh, why I have not relocated berry bushes um, to my base. And the reason is, until you have the ability to preserve berries, I find that it is a lot of effort and not a lot of reward. There's a lot of tasks uh, that I find are best to do in the winter when there's not a lot of else stuff to do. Uh, those tasks would be like um, uh, like animal husbandry or moving cattails and berry bushes. Things like that. Uh, things that can wait for when you're not necessarily running around collecting fruits and veggies from the, uh, the countryside. I also want to put the armor away. Served me well, though. Although, but funny enough, they never hit me. So, to improve food security, uh, we want to expand our, uh, rather, I want to expand both the farms here and then also the beehive. I think uh, in order to get a decent amount of uh, fruit, Heading into the winter, I'm going to want kind of as much honey as possible. And then that also helps with um, obtaining uh, other required resources like uh, like jam. So, the plan is first to harvest some skeps. As inefficiently as possible with this site. Harvest some skeps and then um, and then replace them. So I'm gonna grab two blue clay 
And we need 32 cattails, right? 16 per new skep. Stochastic Turtle, thank you for the bits. And Private Barton. And Mei Len, thank you for the resubs. So first things first, just because it takes a while for the bees to re-populate, uh, I want to do the bee harvest, but then after the bee harvest, I'm going to have you decide how I do the farm expansion. There's a bunch of different ways that I could go about it. Um, I could build more 6x6 farms, or alternatively, I could expand the 6x6 farms to up to 14. Uh, I don't want to go beyond 14 because I would like the farms to be allowed to become um, greenhouses for the winter uh, when I... So, so the plan eventually is to do greenhousing, where as we get into the uh, autumn, we glass it up so that um, warm crops can keep growing. And then as we go into the winter, transitioning warm crops with cold crops. So for instance, from carrots to turnips, because turnips and rye, I believe, fare better in the winter than they do, or in the cold than they do in the heat. Um, so that's the plan, is to slowly transition our crops to a more cold-hardy breed. Um, and in order to do that, the dimensions cannot exceed uh, 20 by, uh, 14 by 14. So that would be part of the plan. And then also to expand the beehives. I think probably a three by three with nine hives is probably what I want to do. So actually, with that in mind, I'll harvest these hives now. Uh, but that might be the first thing that we do. The, the other thing is like, I'm not so thrilled with the flowers I picked because they're high height and it makes it harder to see. So I might want to, at some point, once I have like an abundance of free time, um, change the flower mix from uh, from tall flowers to short flowers. I know, you're so pissed that I'm stealing your honeys. Yeah. I should have built the skeps ahead of time. Stop trying to bite me. It's annoying. It's also really nice to have uh, work tasks that I can do at night when I otherwise would be sleeping. I try to avoid sleeping. Like, at the start of the series, I slept because I was just so vulnerable from anything in the dark that it was, like, dangerous. But now it's like, stay up all night, it's fine. All right, so we have the honey harvested. And I can then press that. Let's take this back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 you're so pissed. I know, I know. Figure out doors, losers. <laughs> They're like, oh man, door handles. We're nemesis. Armor help with bee stings? Um, maybe? I'm not honestly sure. And then with the extra beeswax, I'm just making extra candles. And we have a candle stack here waiting for plates for lanterns. Plates and glass, I suppose. So, add to the candle stack. All right. So that helps a little bit. It's not, well, technically honey is food, but I'm not using it like that. Oh, and here's the Crocs. So here we go. Here's the difference between sealed and unsealed. So the sealed is 14.6 years, and the unsealed is 1.7 years. It's a quite a long time for me not to have to worry about uh, starving or having that spoil. Really? They're attacking me in here? It's just rude. Top it up on my food. And it looks like we're going to have to do some cooking soon. I'll just leave that in there. Is that raw meat going to spoil though? No, it's fresh for four and a half days. It's fine. Uh, so these crocs are good. The, these are actually already cooked meals for 12 and 14 days, so we're fine on that. I 
can't be bothered to actually go fetch my armor. At this point, it probably wouldn't be a terrible idea for me to every day carry my shield. Because a shield, while crouched, uh, will protect you pretty, pretty well. But, um, alright, so farms. Uh, so here are some different ideas. Uh, one way that I could expand the farm is I could go outwards. Uh, as like a plus symbol, if you will. So, expanding the farms, like, off in one direction so that it is a plus, uh, you know, sort of a T-shape or something like that. As long as it's not greater than 14 by 14, it'd be fine. So we go out that way or that way. Um, the other is to build additional farms. And I'm going to have you guys decide. So, how to expand the farms. Add new 6 by 6 or expand the... 6x6 six six to 6x14 six or so. Uh, the other thing that I'll probably end up doing sometime in the winter, which we're obviously not there yet, is, um, is to build uh, potential tree nurseries as well that could be holed up. Oh, look at you crawling on the... To, okay, that's just weird. But I'm not going to get ahead of myself. But that, that is a possibility as well, is to start doing uh, fruit tree stuff. So a lot of the spelt is about to be harvested, and that's going to be a lot of grain. Uh, we just did onions, which is P, so let's do flax, which is a K. Essentially, any given chance to grow flax, I grow flax. And that's 11 more onions. So, as you can see, our onion count is really climbing. And, uh, and that'll certainly help keep us fed for the winter. Oh, yeah, I see why. There was a rift over there. That's why they were flooding in. Being annoying. Right, while you vote on that, I am just going to sieve one stack of bony soil. Oops. Just to get it out of the way. Because if I never do it, it will just stack up and then it will look like I live in some sort of weird mortuary or crypt or something. Uh, I heard some rumblings on the Twitch subreddit about, like, payment processing problems. I don't know how to fix them, but I appreciate you trying. I'll do one more. Really hoping for flax fibers, because once I have the flax fibers to, uh, to make a full, uh, first set of sales, we can also consider uh, mechanizing some of our production. Getting a pulverizer, mechanizing the quarn, getting a health hammer. It would be a very big project, but one that would be fruitful indeed. Uh, essentially, none of it is necessary, per se. You can definitely get by without a health hammer. Anything a health hammer can do, for the most part, you can just do, and I lied, I'm doing three. Uh, you can just do with your own hammer. And same with the Quarn, it just takes a while. But uh, there is no replacement for a pulverizer. So the pulverizer will allow you to pulverize quartz and pulverize bauxite, which is part of the process in um, making steel. So without a pulverizer that's mechanized to a windmill, there is no steel. There's no uh, manual labor equivalent of like running on a hamster wheel, like oxygen not included or something like that. All right, put the bowl down and we are going to expand the farm, cool. So for those that are maybe concerned, um, the plan I eventually have is to make things look appealing, but that's not what I'm gonna be focused on in the first iteration. 
of like base building. So that means like no floating weird platforms and make it look correct and all that jazz. Uh, but for the initial build, I don't care about those things. They don't concern me. But I just wanted to let you know that like, um, you know, sometime down the line, it will be aesthetic as much as, uh, as much as possible. So if I'm not mistaken, I need more... Yeah, I don't have a lot of medium fertility soil. And then... If we plan on uh, this here being flush with a door, because I'm, I'm just sort of like conceptualizing what the forever farm will look like. It means that this entire walkway probably needs to be one higher or or like a stair up to the farm. Maybe that, that would be a little less unattractive. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. So let's go ahead and uh, dig up some medium fertility soil, and then we're going to have to make some more cobblestone. Now, I did get a question on YouTube about, like, why don't I dig up the ruins for cobblestone? Because, yeah, I mean, the ruins have a pretty good source of cobblestone. I, I don't. I don't deny that at all. Uh, but it takes some time, and it really would um, sort of hijack the priorities that I'm working on a bit, which is why you don't see me stopping what I'm doing at every ruin to... Uh, to dig cobblestone because it would, you know, it would pull away my attention from the things I'm working on. So if I was medium soil, where the hell would I be? One more for Terra Preta? I th well, so here's my two cents. Terra Preta is really nice when you have the time to spend searching for it, and you're searching for other things as well. Searching for just Terra Preta and not pairing it with like exploring for new biomes or like rare resources is probably a bit of a waste of time. That's Pete, isn't it? Um, and then also, as long as you're like rotating your medium soil, each tile of medium soil can get you three grows of different potassium, nitrate, and um, uh, phosphate. So it's not that critical that you uh, that you get Terra Preta because you can definitely manage without it. Uh, the other thing I want to do, because I do have a, a somewhat limited amount of seeds, is while I'm out and about, look for wild crops so that there's just more wild crops to, to sow. I never got around to making that second compost. Yeah. And I probably won't bother with it. I'll uh, let the first compost come done. Move the barrel and then make a second one. Ultra high considerate. Whoa. Like right in my own backyard. Where am I? Oh, here I am. Um, consider it would be 10. Cool. That was worth doing. Uh, and while I'm here, let's, uh, just grab some stones for your cobblestone. Ultra high, it was a uh, 0.3. It doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think of the, in a 16 by 16 by all the way down to bedrock, or I'm just gonna call it bedrock. It's not bedrock. Um, is a lot of potential stones. So although that doesn't sound high, there could be, you know, a thousand tin underneath me. The reeds are never... You don't tend to get reeds that are, like, even into the teens. 
Like that would be unusual. Maybe for like quartz or, or copper. You can get high mounts, but, but typically you don't get super high yield alerts or anything like that. Yeah, deep veins are absolutely massive. Exactly. Question. Should I... When expanding... The apiary... Should I change flowers? There's three options there. So I can just throw as many flowers as I find into the apiary, and that'd be fine. Um, I could change them all over to like a single type of flower, which is going to be a lot easier to organize, but it might be a little bit more challenging to find the flower itself. Or I can um, keep going with the pattern I have, even though I think it's uh, maybe a little flawed. All right, that's a that's a decent amount of uh, granite stone. I'm pretty close to like breaking my pick. Is this Pete? All right, let's mark this down as Pete. I'm gonna head eastward into the grasslands and find myself. Oh, hello. Find myself some uh, medium soil. Low fertility soil because it's it has such a low base fertility. Um, what ends up happening if you try to use it is like whatever crop that you plant. Most crops will require more fertility than low fertility soil can offer. So you get no situation where. Um, your crop is like half grown and then the soil no longer has nutrients left in it and as a result uh you're you'll have to fertilize it it's completely not worth using like not even if you're desperate because it's going to be so annoying for you to grow anything except for flowers you can put flowers on it and i'm pretty sure that's what i did in my apiary i could be wrong but i think i just used low fertility can you catch fish? Um, you can't hatch them so much as you can just spear kill them. So, like, yes, sort of? Whoa! Oh, okay, yeah, there's a rift over there. I heard a, a grumble of a... of a... of a drifter, and I was like, huh, there must be a cave underneath me. Because that's another way to find caves, just through audio cues. Because if there's no drifters on the surface and you hear grumbles, well, okay, you've got drifters somewhere very close underground. It's not quite like, um, I mean, I haven't played Minecraft in like a decade and a half, but it's not quite like Minecraft where, like, it's a really good audio indicator, but it's, it's decent. I'm just getting a whole lot of medium soil so I don't have to come back here any, every time I want to expand. And I'll even, as crazy as this sounds, I'll even mark it down so I don't have to go searching. Alright. It does look like you guys want me to change flowers, and I'll probably pick flowers like, like Heather, which is really low. It's like ankle- Oh, Jesus! Heather is like ankle height, which is going to be a lot easier for me to like see when I'm uh, beekeeping. Future me will thank me for for this uh, 
this whole patching. Now all I can fall is like a few tiles and not like forever until my doom. Berry bushes do not count as flowers, uh, nor do ferns. That would be really good synergy if it did. So those skeps are empty. And these are poor. Need more flowers. Just checking and make sure they're not harvestable. Alright, so the... Initially, this is going to be real ugly. Uh, because I don't even have the cobblestone to, like, expand just yet. Um... Oops. I'm more concerned about um, just getting a new new crops in the ground than I am anything else. So what is this? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And maybe I'll do one more row. And that will be as far as I go. Because I won't be able to continue this pattern without exceeding the 14 size limit. And a, a little reminder, we chose that um, my farms have high proximity to water, so I don't have to water them. Which I think is smart. Now the one thing I would say is like, my farm is not organized at all. The crops are like all over the place in all sorts of different states of growth. So there's um, virtually no rhyme or reason or organization to it. For better or for worse. You can replant berry bushes. You can also replant um, uh, cattails as well. Essentially, like anything, you can replant. And, um... I think, probably, if I have an abundance of time, or, like, maybe in the... in the... in the winter, we can go around collecting berry bushes. So that, in springtime, when they start, um... Uh, when they become harvestable, we can collect berries by the bajillion and make, like, cider or, or booze or whatever. Oh, that hoe didn't last very long. I don't think I have a free bucket either. Because I think we used all our buckets up. So I'm going to need to make another bucket to even fill those um, water holes. And that costs flax twine, which I'm like reluctant to use because I'm trying to save up for the sales. But there's no avoiding that. Do I even have? Oh, yeah, I do have one flax twine. What I ought to do is just have a bucket completely dedicated towards water. I mean, that, that's sort of the idea, is that you have buckets dedicated to specific liquids. So, like, one for water, one for, um... One for... That's not how to do it. Hold control. One for, uh... Honey... Derp. Also not how to do it. And whatever other, like, like milk. You know, once you have animal husbandry, you probably have a bucket of milk. And that way, um, you know, you're not having to constantly remake buckets. So, I gotta get hoeing. I'm gonna make a flint hoe instead of a granite one, because it uh, will last longer. I'll make two. Probably gonna need more than one. Help me. Thank you for the uh, the sub. And I would say it looks like we want to change flowers.
I have one follow-up question about that. Okay, I had a instant dread that these weren't hoes, that these were like shovels or something wrong. But no, we're good. And although I've said this before, one warning, when you're expanding your farm, make sure that you don't have grass growing near it. Because long grass will spawn bunnies, and bunnies will eat your crops. So, it's very important that all of your farm tile, and if you don't have enough seeds, which I might not have enough seeds, uh, what we could end up doing is um, putting down like stones or something like that to stop the spawns. Because you do not want bunnies able to valid spawn in your farm. That would be devastating. Because they're going to eat everything. So I'm going to prioritize the seeds that I know fare well in this um, climate. So flax, spelt, onion. And then, because we have space, even though these yields will be stunted, uh, stunted yields are fine, you're still going to get a lot more than not planting it at all. So this is the new soybeans that we have. And then I'll do turnip. Uh, turnips are cold-loving crops, so they'll probably get stunted, but oh well. We got space. And I'm going to use it. So there's that farm. Obviously, it's not, um, doesn't look nice, doesn't have walls or anything, but uh, good enough. And we'll do the same thing identically on this side. One thing I should have double checked, because I've been known to get this wrong, is the dimensions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep, perfect. So as long as I have wall, like I can have. A space at the front, two, two tiles in the front to add to the greenhouse for like, you know, a uh, composting barrel or something like that. But essentially there's, um, we're at max length. If I want to expand it anymore, I have to go wide. And unlike, uh, oh wow, I screwed that up. Unlike, um... Unlike some other rooms, greenhouses and cellars will immediately inform you of the benefit. Whereas like regular rooms, it can be actually kind of tricky to know if it's a valid room or not. The game like doesn't exactly tell you that you're in a valid room. Whereas a greenhouse, it will say the greenhouse is five degrees warmer than uh, ambient temperature. So you'll know without having to ponder or do math or anything that like, yep, it's a greenhouse. And then with a the cellar, you can see the um, the spoil rate, uh, you know, drops. So that becomes pretty obvious that it's functioning. Hey, Mikus. Thank you for the lurk. And for the reset. Probably I'm going to want to cut that pine down. Unless it's, uh... Yeah, I mean, whatever the case might be, I'm going to want to cut that pine down. Because it's in the way. Let's use up our flint axe. Well, no, I'm, I'll probably use the... No, let's use up the flint axe. I don't... Suspect I'll be making charcoal anytime soon, so I don't need flints ax axes. Cheers, by the way. Oh, this is a resin producing one. That's sad. But it's uh, encroaching on my base. It has to go. Yeah. 
This is a much bigger pine. The time it takes, uh, sort of like Terraria, the time it takes to cut down a tree is based upon the height of the tree because you don't have to cut each individual log segment. You just cut from the base and it topples. So giant trees take a while. And, and in that case, what ended up happening was my, um, my axe broke. So all of the progress that I had made uh, added up. So now that this is all that's left is the stump essentially, which is another really nice feature because otherwise I would have to like cut it all over again, which would suck. I made an urban garden in the middle of nature. Ah, uh, yep. I, I fully appreciate how weird that is. However, it does make it a lot easier to keep it away from uh, critters that would otherwise eat my crop, so. That and um, I have a, a, a land bridge base. At some point, like once I have a lot of time, I could even hypothetically terraform so that this is one contiguous water where there's like a water bridge or a canal that goes underneath my base so that if I wanted a boat, which boats are getting added at some point in the game, from the north to the south uh, lakes, I can have an interconnected lake system in that way. Might be neat to do at some point. Just when I'm not rushing towards trying not to starve for, uh, for the winter. And I'll have to periodically, and, and I'm going to rely on you guys, periodically remind me to check up on my crop because um, a lot of the stuff is near the end stages of its growth, uh, meaning that it's harvest time and to transition it from, yeah, to change it over. Is that a resin producing stump? As far as I know, the way it works is it's the actual section that produces resin. So it's not, um, it doesn't like transfer over. I could be wrong about that, but that is my understanding. Meaning that if you have a resin producing spot on a tree, it's that spot specifically. And the whole rest of the tree could be cut down that isn't connected to the trunk. And, but I don't know why you do that. but. I think that's the way it works. I did it again. <laughs> this is easy to get rid of water. A lot of rye that we'll have. The moisture levels of the, uh, the plots back here. Oh my god, I had the exact correct amount of seeds. Uh, the moisture levels back there like haven't updated yet. So I'll just quickly water it a little bit so that it can grow. It would update on zone, by the by. I'm not patient. Um, should... What should I do now? Add walls to the farm. Like, like, flooring walls. Or whatever. Or, um, expand apiary. Or do a different task. Ooh, 
What do I use to fill the water spots? A bucket? Is that what you were asking? The other thing I could do, just because I want flax, is like, whenever I'm watering... And I guess cabbage is kind of nice too. Um, to water my flax just so it gets the extra boost of growing speed. I'm not going to go way out of my way to like make sure all flax everywhere is watered, just like where it's obvious. Good enough. Thank you for tuning in to Vintage Story, which originally streamed live on Twitch December 7th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind for this series I ask for no spoilers or backseating. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams, and if you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Seraphs. <laughs>